Today we celebrate the memory of Saint Xenia of Rome. Xenia lived in the 400s in the, in the 5th century. She was the daughter of a Roman senator. And she left Rome at one point to travel to Asia Minor, to settle in a city in Asia Minor, where she founded a monastery. She became a deaconess in the church, and she devoted her life to serving the poor and the afflicted of that region. Now, Samia's name, her given name, actually was Eusebia. And she changed her name to Xenia when she went to Asia Minor to dedicate herself to serving the Lord. Xenia means an outsider or a stranger. That's what the word the name Xenia means, someone who is a stranger, a foreigner. Now, Xenia did not take on that name because she had moved from Rome to Asia Minor or because she felt like she was an outsider among the Christians there. Clearly, she didn't feel like an outsider. I mean, they welcomed her. They let her set up a monastery. They made her a deaconess, a leader in the church. So it wasn't for that reason that she called herself an outsider. She did this because of her basic understanding of her identity as a Christian. As a Christian, she saw herself as an outsider. We just began our online Bible studies last week, Tuesday evening, 7 p.m. Eastern, on Zoom. And we are looking at the letter to the Hebrews. And we discussed Hebrews chapter 2, and in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 11, Christ and the church are described as he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified. And it literally means he who sets apart, that's Christ, and those who are being set apart, that's us. You see, sanctification, holiness, is the act of being set apart. We're setting ourselves apart to worship and serve God. We are setting ourselves up as the exclusive, under the exclusive lordship of God. This Sunday in the Orthodox Church in America is Sanctity of Life Sunday. We believe life is sacred, it is holy. What do we mean by that? Life is set apart as the exclusive purview of God. That's what that means. So Christians are set apart from a fallen, a broken world. We are strangers, foreigners to this world. In 1 Peter chapter 2, Peter calls Christians sojourners and pilgrims, which is to say that when it comes to this world, we are just passing through. Now on this Sunday, we also commemorate the new martyrs and confessors of Russia. These are the Christians who lived in the days of the Soviet Union behind the Iron Curtain in Russia, but also in the other countries of the Soviet bloc who suffered persecution and death under the Soviet yoke. Now, it's very interesting when you talk to Christians who survived that, the dissidents and others, particularly the clergy, the monastics, because they'll say, you know, the communists did one good thing for us. You know, they, they had, they had, we had one thing going under the communists, and it was the fact that we knew very clearly that we did not belong, that we were the outsiders. They made that very clear. It is not always easy for us to feel like outsiders in this world. Today, uh, the online Sunday school class, which will be posted a little later uh, in the afternoon, is about Samuel. Samuel was the last judge of Israel. See, when the Israelites first get into the promised land, God is their ruler. He's their king. But as they get established and start growing as a community, they look at their neighbors, the pagan neighbors, and they notice that all their pagan neighbors, they have a person sitting on a throne that's their ruler, that they can go to and make grievances to and, and, and interact with. And so they say to God, we want to be like our neighbors. 
We want to have a person sitting on a throne. And so at first, God gives them the judges. And you can read about the judges in the book of Judges. And later on, he gives them kings. The thing is that, you see, God alone was supposed to be Israel's ruler. The throne he sat on was in the Holy of Holies in the temple. That was supposed to be the center of their life. But they looked at their neighbors who had people on thrones. And looking at their neighbors, the Israelites said, you know, we should really be like that. And this is what happens today. It is the one downfall of living in a pluralistic, democratic society. That it's easy for us to look at our, our neighbors, non-Orthodox, non-Christian, non-believing, and look at their lives and say, you know what? We should really be like that. It is easy to forget that we are sojourners, that we are just passing through. Now, being set apart from the world does not mean that we are indifferent to the world. It does not mean that we hate the world. I mean, look at St. Xenia's work with the poor and the brokenhearted. That was out of Christian compassion for the world. Jesus today in the gospel, this, this blind man calling, Son of David, have mercy on me. It's interesting that the crowd, the world is telling him to be quiet. <laughs> but Jesus has compassion on him. So being set apart from the world does not mean being indifferent to the world. When you look at the story of these Soviet dissidents that were in the gulags and the concentration camps, there's a wonderful book called Father Arseni, which is about a priest in a concentration camp, and how kind and compassionate these people were, these prisoners, with their fellow prisoners, even atheists who were making fun of them for their beliefs, even the guards who were going out of their way to break their spirit and to dehumanize them. And in all of it, these Christians were nothing but loving and compassionate. Being set apart from the world does not mean being indifferent to the world. And that, by the way, also does not just mean how we treat people who are in pain. It also means how we look at the good things of this world. St. John Chrysostom said, fine, he said, go to the theater. Go to the chariot races. Go ahead. Only don't let those things become more important to you than the things of God. So put in at least as much effort to getting to church as you do to getting to the big game on time. As Christians, we are all xeni. We are all outsiders, foreigners, strangers, and just passing through this world. And keeping our minds set on the goal, on the terminus, on where we are heading, helps us to keep in perspective what we see in this world. By keeping our eyes on things above, it helps us to make sense of what's going on right here and now. Where there is pain, we have a way, and that's way with a capital W, to bring comfort and encouragement. And where there is joy and beauty, we see coming attractions of the joy and beauty of the kingdom of God. To him be all glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Amen.